Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. We get a lot of questions from folks regarding glues. What should I use? Where should I use it? How should I apply it? Well, let's just do a big glue overview. In fact, there's a trick in here for applying glue to larger panels. Makes it quick and easy. So let's step over here and look at our first type of glue. In my shop, I use two types of glue, and that works for everything. Now, here's what it boils down to. Do I need to tack to sew, or do I want to tack for permanent? If we're simply going to tack to sew, we just need a glue that's going to hold us together until we get our chisel line in. If it comes apart after that, it's no issue. Our chisel holes are going to match up. Now, we'll look at some ways to work with our contact cement, but let's start right here. This is a simple white glue, and I love it. It's the Fibings Leathercraft Cement. With this, see I'm going to drop in a stitch line, got a groove line there. So with this, all I need to do is wick that onto my edge. And you'll notice I can get a little bit on the tip of my finger, and I can just turn my finger. Therefore, I get a good consistent line that's going to tack very well. So let's drop some of this in. Good. Now, let's wipe that off. Drop in our second panel. A lot easier to line up. Now with our contact cement, that's tough, but we've got a trick to get around that. So let's lay that in, very nice. Leave that right there, I'm gonna take my marble or my quartz and I'm just gonna lay that on top. Let's give that about five minutes. About five minutes dry time, all we really need. So therefore, we've got a good bond. That is easily gonna hold long enough for me to get my chisel line and my stitch line in. Now when we jump over to contact cement, it's a little bit different situation. Love the barge. In fact, this is what the saddle folks and the shoe folks swear by. For us crafters, a little easier on the budget is the S18. And I love this. We're just gonna do a small piece here. Kinda get the feel for it. Then we're gonna jump over, talk about some thinner. Then we'll get back and look at some tricks, how to make this very easy to apply. Because with a contact cement, we're gonna need glue on both pieces. The downside here is that when these go together, it's bonded, and that's the end of it. We don't have a lot of room for error. So let's do this, I'm gonna add glue. What I can do is go right to the edge of my table. So therefore, I'm not getting glue on my work surface, which can transfer over to my, my top grain or the face of my project. So if I put that right on my edge, I can go right off the edge of the leather. Makes the whole thing very fast and easy. So I'm gonna do this to both pieces, and we'll, we'll bond these together. Okay, right to my edge, so therefore I've got no air pockets on this, but also ventilation needed, absolutely. Now, let's give this maybe about five minutes, let that glue dry. Okay, little dry time here. The glue, it looks dry, it feels dry, but it's tacky. That's what we're looking for. Now, with the contact cement, we're gonna lay this together, but the tough part here is that we only have one shot. Well, now that's not too bad. I got that pretty close, but we've got a trick here that's gonna make that super easy. But at the same time, no glue on anything but my project. So let's take this, press that down. Now, that's gonna react as a single piece of leather, and that's a good bond. That's gonna last for years. Like with our mouse pad, we don't necessarily need a stitch line here. That's not gonna take a lot of stress. So we can simply tack for permanent with this. Now, did you notice how easy the glue went on? The consistency there. Well, over time, this can thicken. We've got a great product that is an absolute necessity in our shop if we use our contact cement. Before joining Weaver, I never used my glue thinner, but I've seen the light now. Because over time, our glue's gonna thicken. What happens, or what's happened to me, is I'll get down to about here, and that gets so thick, I can't use it. Glue thinner, gonna save the day. In fact, this can, old, almost empty. We can use the glue right to the very end. Now, I don't actually have a recipe for adding our thinner. I simply go by the thickness of the glue. But let's see if this helps. Yeah, I've gotten that glue almost to the very end. Very cost effective. Now, when I add this, notice how it's thick and it wants to roll on me. That's gonna to be tough to control and it's gonna create nothing for us but a mess. Now this is the can we just used. Let's look at the consistency here. 
Yeah, there we go. Notice how that applies very easily. It spreads easily. That's going to give me a good bond. Now, like I said, I don't necessarily have a recipe here, but simply looking at the consistency of the two, that's going to help me add a little bit of thinner, try to drop that thickness a little bit. So therefore, again, we can use a can of glue right to the very end. Okay, applying contact cement. Like I said, this can be a little bit difficult because when the pieces go together, that's our only shot. But there's a couple of tricks that are going to make that very easy. Let's step back over to our main table and look at those. With our white glue, once we apply that, we can pull this back apart if it's not a good meat. Contact cement, not the case. In fact, this is dry now. When I try to pull this apart, the leather itself is starting to separate as opposed to the glue. Well, yay and boo, because we've got to line this up in one pass. Now, when it's wet, we can pry, we can pry this back apart, but what's gonna happen is we're either gonna stretch, our, stretch out our face or our liner leather. That's not gonna work. It's gonna create a mess. You know what, let's do this. Let's just bypass that whole problem. So let's say with a mouse pad, I've got my main body cut to size. On my liner, I'm going to overcut this. Then I'm going to draw in the line for my final size. So what's gonna happen here? So on my face leather, I can go right to my edge so we don't have air pockets or misses. Over here, I'm going to take my glue over that line. So therefore, when I lay that in, first off, I can see where I'm laying that in. But if it's not perfect and I miss a little bit, well, that's no problem because what we're gonna do is use our main body as our straight edge. So therefore, I can trim around this. It's gonna look just like it was die cut. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, that's not really an issue because what we can do is overcut both panels. If we make this back piece, let's see, there we go, large enough to where I know I've got glue everywhere. I'll glue the two pieces together, going right to the edge on both pieces. So now what I can do is take my straight edge and I can trim to size, trim both pieces to size. So therefore, again, it's gonna look like a die cut. And we'll try that here in just a second. But ways to apply contact cement. We've got a brush on the bottle or on the cap. That's easy enough. That's going to cover smaller pieces and it doesn't take too much time. Daubers, they're okay, but they really don't do any better job than the brush does. Now, this is funny because if we've got to get into a small area, say we are going to sew this and we leave a little pocket here without glue so we can hide our knot, come back in and drop some glue in and close that down. Q-tip, I'll just say right now, that did not end well. Okay, let's just leave that one where it is, speaking from experience. But also, if we've got a large panel, and this is a good point, or a perfect point, say we've got a briefcase, we're gonna line this. This little brush, it's gonna take hours to get glue on this entire piece and our liner piece. So what we can do is use a simple glue tray. In fact, I think this is for trim work. It's a smaller brush, we can drop our glue in there and notice how fast I can put glue on that. Literally in seconds. So when we jump over to a very large panel, this will take no time at all to put glue on both panels. No kidding, under five minutes, where with a brush, it could take hours. Now, when we press this down, we've got two rollers and I love these, exceptionally heavy. So we can run these along our, our glued piece, therefore press that down. The only thing here we need to be cautious of is if we've got a leather that can take an indention relatively easily, we just need to watch those edges. But we can always jump up to a rolling pin. Now, let's be careful because if we steal this from the kitchen, we're going to get in trouble. But I stole this from the kitchen about 20 years ago. But it's still working. But now I can lay that glue and liner down, and I can roll that entire piece in no time at all. Again, making everything very easy. That's the point. Now, last thing, this is called a rougher, and it's kind of an obscure tool, but it's a big help. Say, like on this leather, we've got a real tight grain on the back, and it's not gonna take the glue as much as we would like. So we can take our rougher, and we gotta be careful with this because this will rough us just as fast as it'll rough the leather. But I can always run this down my edge. Let's break up that grain on the back. Yeah, this is a very imperfect process, but it works very well. So now I've got a roughed edge on that. That's gonna take glue very nicely. Okay, so let's add some glue here. 
Let's take our finished piece. I've got my backing, got my face. Now I'm just going to use a use the uh, use the brush here because this won't be too bad. So with this, what I want to do is start by making sure I go over my edge, my ink edge. So therefore, again, I've got no misses or no air pockets on our edge. So I'm going to fill this in, go all the way around my edge. Then I'm going to fill in my center over here, just like we did before. I'm going to lay this on my edge and I'm going to go straight off and I'm going to cover the entire panel there as well. Now the glue's going on relatively easily. One thing we can do, and I missed this, but I don't typically like to do this, but we can always pour some of our glue onto our, onto our project and simply with a piece of scrap, squeegee that around. It works very well, but it can be a bit of a mess on our bottle. So I'm going to finish adding glue here and let's knock these together. Okay, I've got glue on both pieces. So let's give that maybe five minutes. Let that glue dry. Then we'll put these together, trim them, and it's going to look just like they were die cut. Looks dry, feels dry, and it's tacky. That will, that's what we're looking for. Now when we lay this in, I want to try to hit my pin line. We don't have to though. We've gone over that line. So therefore, we know we've got a good bond all the way around. So let's press that down. Notice, we don't have to work at trying to center this or maybe hit a line or a corner. Okay, that looks good. Now let's take a knife. I would say let's start with a new blade every time when we're cutting to size. So let's use our panel just as our straight edge. Look at that. Look at that edge. It looks like it was die cut. And how easy was that? We don't have to line anything up. We simply overcut our liner, trim to size, and we've got a perfect cut. Now, if you're not comfortable trying to cut from our, from our front panel, just overcut the front panel. Glue, trim everything, and again, you're going to have a beautiful, perfect edge. We're not going to have to worry about any messes or holidays because we took that glue right over our marked line. Adding adhesives to our Leathercraft projects is much like a lot of steps in Leathercraft. Say a perfect example, setting a rivet. We know how to set a rivet, it's easy to do. But when we look a little bit deeper, we start to find tricks, techniques, tools that are going to help the whole process out. And that's the point. If we can trim those tedious steps or time consuming steps, well, we're going to enjoy the time in our shop much more and our project's going to show it. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.